Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new build video with me, Sherman. Today guys, I'm bringing you the Hunter solo build for Merkmeyer. And it is a Bobo build, something that hasn't been seen by me ever. And that's good because solo builds are very unique and they have to have a kind of different play style than most builds. So I went with something that I felt comfortable with. And it is a little bit more of an advanced build to my usual builds. But I'll tell you what you can do to swap things out to make it a little easier if you can't access certain things. <clears throat> so, let's get into it. So as you guys can see, we are a Khajiit Warden. Now, I chose Khajiit because Khajiits get an 8% weapon critical. This allows them to build for higher crit. Also, bows give them a crit chance. So that included with it gives them a much greater crit capability with a bow so they can run other sets besides one set that does lots of crit and another set that does lots of crit. Um, as you can see, base, we have 47% crit with a 2,878 weapon damage. This is base, this is unbuffed. We do have a 21k health, 28k stamina, and a 1,720 stamina recovery. <clears throat> we also have a 12k physical and spell resist. We're not in the fight up close, so being at ranged allows us to have a little bit less resistances and to play without a shield. We are running the Warrior Mundestone. We do have the Wild Guardian, which is the bear companion for the Warden. This is going to allow us to have a kind of a tankier pet. We do have Minor Berserk on the front bar, and we are using Dubious Cameron Throne. Now, you can use Blue Food for this if you can't get Dubious Cameron Throne. Um, even though you can buy this, it's a little bit more expensive than Blue Food. And there is a Gold Food um, that you can get that gives you health, recovery, stam recovery, max stam, and max health. The reason I like Dubious is it's cheap, it's inexpensive to get, and you can, you can usually get it in a stack of 100. All right, so moving on now to the gear. <clears throat> so like I said, the two types of food you can use is Dubious, Cameron Throne, and the Blue Food. The Blue Food will give you more health and more stamina. So you will go up to about a 23k health and 25 when you're fully buffed. This takes you up to about a 22, almost 23k health with the 28k stamina. So as you guys can see, I have <clears throat> put together this build using very particular sets uh, that will give you the greater benefits. So we are using Vulcan Scoria and Vulcan Scoria isn't ideal for this. Uh, Veladrith is, but because we're playing a Khajiit, we don't have a lot of health. We don't have any racial benefits to our character besides the crit and stamina recovery and health recovery and stealth bonus. So we don't get anything that boosts our character anywhere else. So using something like Vulcan Scoria is ideal on a Khajiit. Versus something like Veladrith, which is going to give you more weapon damage. Now, you're going to lose that health benefit. And the health benefit plays really well into this. The next set we're using is Griffins. Being a bow build, you're not going to have time to run up, place a trap, and back off. So, using this set allows you to get minor force. And it boosts your critical damage by 10%. It also increases your movement speed by 10%. So you can move around and be more mobile with this build, which is why it's more of an advanced build compared to some of the other builds that I've done in the past. The other set we're running is Spriggans. Now Spriggans is easy to get if you know how to farm it and it's not too complicated. You get the jewelry from Dolmens in Bancori and you can get the bow in the public dungeon and usually it takes a little bit to get the bow. The jewelry is pretty simple. Uh, but it can also take time if you don't know the layout of Bancora and how to farm the Dolmens. But it's an easy set to get. And it's a very powerful set with this build because you end up getting about 10k penetration on the enemies. Um, which allows you to get through their armor and kill them faster in Overland. In dungeons, when you're soloing dungeons, you get a greater amount of that value which allows you to kill things faster. Alright, so going over the traits and the enchants, we are running three tri-stats on the big pieces. This is going to allow us to build out our health a little bit more and our stamina. We don't have quite as high as I'd, I usually like for my solo builds, which is about 24 to 25k uh, max health. 
and we're really not that high on our max stamina pool but still we can bring enough damage with this build because we can get up to about a 4k weapon damage when we're fully buffed i'll go ahead and show you the basic buff of our weapon damage and as you can see we're at 3379 and when we we proc our one of our enchants we actually go up to about a 4k um 4000 something weapon damage so the bigger pieces like i said tri stats the small pieces you're gonna want uh max stamina and yes i am running all divines on this instead of running the nern honed here on the smaller pieces and reinforced stuff with the big pieces being infused uh the reason why i did it this way all divines is because i can get away with this being at ranged so the next thing is the jewelry we are using two weapon damage you can use three if you are in a, a, a very skilled player and you're very comfortable with your resource management but i like to use the stam recovery because i like to get that resource back i love to keep that resource as maxed as possible so i'm not having to rely on somebody else feeding me resources the thing you have to understand about playing solo versus playing in a group is you're not given being given resources or synergies so you have to play more off of what you have available. Now you will be using potions, just like everyone else. Usually you don't use them off of cooldown, but in this case you do use them off cooldown, and that's because you're using buff potions, and you're going to be using the warrior pots or the power pots, stamina power pots. These things give you stamina back, they give you stamina recovery, they offer you major brutality and major savagery, increasing weapon damage by 20%, and increasing your weapon critical by 10%. You don't have to use this if you don't want to. There's other tools you can use to boost those things. So, but this is what I like to use. <clears throat> now, moving on to the weapon enchants. We are using a Nernhone weapon with a physical damage or a stamina absorb enchant. You can use a poison damage if you want, or you can use something else. This is just to help you with resource management. On the back bar, though, we are using an infused bow with a weapon spell damage enchant, and it is a maelstrom bow. If you do not have access to a maelstrom bow, you can use an agility bow, which you can get from, um, you know, guild traders, or you can get it from the daily random dungeons. And it's not too hard to get if you farm it, and it's not too hard to get to buy it. But if you do get one, make sure you get it infused so you can put weapon damage on it. And this will help you build up your your stamina when you're on the back bar. It doesn't help a whole lot. Not nowhere near as much as a Maelstrom bow does. But it does allow you to use that uh, to get it. So, But that's the, the gear, the traits, the Munda Stones, all that stuff. Let's go into the skills. So looking over our character here. Uh, going through the skills, starting with the passives, make sure you get all of your class passives. I know you're not going to be using all of them 100%, but there is times where you might want to use one of the other skills you have available to give you some, some different kind of benefit, depending on the kind of play you're doing, or depending on what kind of uh, content you're doing. Moving on to the weapons uh, passives, make sure you get all of the bow passives. There are some bow skills. Uh, one bow skill we do not have unlocked, which is Scattershot. You can use this if you want, but make sure that you, you're using it for the right reasons. Again, it comes down to the environment you're in, dungeon, uh, public dungeon, delve, world boss you're facing. Uh, I can help. Now moving on to the armor passives, make sure you get the top three of the light armor passives because this one boosts your spell resist. This one will give you a little bit less magicka cost. You are using a magicka ability, so reducing that magicka cost kind of helps. And this one gives you some benefits to wearing the light piece of armor to reduce snares and reduce your sprint cost. Heavy armor, you want all three of the top three. They all play into it really well. And then moving on to the world skills. Now, I'm going to do something different this time. I'm going to tell you, unlock all your ledgermen. So this way, if you're playing Overland soloing and you come across chests, they allow you to get those things. And it also allows you to get the Thieves' Guild stuff. And you can use those Thieves' Guild uh, things that you find to turn around and, and uh, sell to the traders there or whatever. Soul Magic, you definitely want to get these two things for Soul Magic, the Soul Summons and Soul Lock. Moving on to Guild, Spider's Guild. 
I unlock all the passives and I also unlock Evil Hunter because I do use this when I don't have power pots. So this will go on one bar, on my main bar. Mage's Guild, I don't use anything. Sigic Order, I don't use anything. And moving on to the Thieves Guild, I do use the Thieves Guild stuff and the Dark Brotherhood stuff because I'm a solo player. I want to have access to being able to do all these different things. Now, getting the Dark Brotherhood and Thieves Guild do take a long time, just like Ledgerman. But if you can get those, just unlock them as you go. Moving on to Undaunted, you just need these two Undaunted passives. They really help out. It's not going to be impossible for you to get um, if you play Dungeons on Normal with a group and a pug. And then moving on to Assault, you're going to want to do PvP to get Resolving Vigor. If you don't have Resolving Vigor, it's okay. You can use the Green Balance skill, the Stamina Hill here. It is this one. You can use Soothing Spores if you want. And this does help because it helps. it's easier to target your bear with this than it is using Vigor. Because this one you have to be within 10 meters. This one has a 20 meter range. So you have a greater distance. You can apply the heal to you and your bear. Moving on to Racials. Khajiit isn't ideal, to be honest. Um, it's just one race that you can use for this. You can use any race for this. But the reason I chose Khajiit was because of the 8% weapon damage, or weapon critical. This really plays well with this particular setup of, a solo, of the solo builds. Moving on to crafting, alchemy, medicinal use, really good. Provisioning, Gorban and Connoisseur. Those are the ones you want. Now going over the skills on each bar, Starting with the first set of skills, we are running Focused Aim. The reason we're using Focused Aim is it does a lot of damage, but it also marks the target uh, in range which enemies can hit, as it says, uh, by bow attacks by uh, 5 meters for 10 seconds. So it increases your range on them with this by 5 meters so you can hit at a further distance. It also applies Minor Fracture and mi uh, minor fracture on them, reducing their physical resist by 1320. Now remember, we're using Spriggans, which also boosts or gives us a uh, increased physical penetration or thing uh, that does 3,000 something. So we almost get 5k from the two of these. Next, we do have Venom Arrow. Now, Poison Injection is a good one, but when you're playing solo, Venom Arrow is a better option because of the, the secondary passive it has, which is if you hit an enemy... Casting an ability, they are interrupted, set off balance, and stunned for three seconds. So this comes in handy for, for casters, so you can bring them down easier. Next, we have Subtraining Assault. Everyone knows why we have this. It does good damage, and on top of that, it also applies Major Fracture. This reduces physical resistance by 5,000 to 80, 80 for five seconds. So we can keep this up almost 100%. If you're a skilled enough player, you can keep it up 100%. Next, we have Resolving Vigor. Again, really good heal for us, good heal for our pet. So we can we can heal both of us, which is really good. Next, we do have Bird of Prey. We have this here for the Minor Berserk only. This increases our damage done by 8%. Now, you can use a monster set if you want to to change out for this. But if you do that, you got to change Spriggans to something else. And then you have to change your CP to, to kind of match what Spriggans does. The next thing we have is our bear, Wild Guardian. Now, this does a physical damage, and it can do um, increased physical damage and stunning enemies. It's a really good control support kind of setup. Now, whenever you activate the synergy or the ultimate from this, which costs 75, it does 14,788 physical damage and deals 100% more damage to enemies below 25% health. It's kind of like your execute. You're going to want to like fire this off as much as you can when they're below 25% health. Moving on to the back bar, we have Cutting Dive. Now, Cutting Dive is just a ranged ability. It just does damage. It's just there for that purpose. And it's really cheap, so you can spam this sometimes to kill enemies. And you can most of the time kill overland mobs in a couple hits. Next thing we have is Acid Spray, another great ability because it does hit multiple targets. It does damage over time. It does it over six uh, damage over six seconds, but it also reduces their movement speed. So it's a great CC for you to have because you you want to have a mixture of different things for your build, damage control and support. So we have all that on this build. 
The next thing we have is Endless Hail. We have this here for the damage over time. It does do a lot of damage over time. So it's really good to keep this applied so you can bring down any trash that might come into the area or you can just bring down, uh, help, you know, bring you down your boss that you're fighting or something really quick. The next thing we have is Bullnetch. We have this here to re for stamina recovery. It does give us major brutality and major savagery, but we're using power pots for that. We're just using it mainly for the stamina recovery. The next ability is Ice Fortress. This is going to give us major ward and major resolve, increasing both spell and physical resist by 5,280. We do have an 18k spell resist and physical resist, but not 100%. So use this all the time. Keep this applied all the time. You also get Minor Protection, which reduces your damage taken by 8%. And I'm going to show you why this works really well with this particular setup. Next up again, we do have the Wild Guardian. So that is the skills, guys. Now we're going to jump into CP, starting with the Red Tree. And this is where that 8% damage reduction really comes into play, is with the Red Tree. So we have 66 in the Ironclad. This is going to reduce the damage we take from direct damage attacks by 22%. We do have 7 into medium armor focus. This is going to give us 713 extra physical resist. We have 6 into spell shield, increasing our spell resist by 614. Now remember, we are wearing one piece of light armor, so we're going to get a little bit of extra spell resist from it. And then wearing the heavy one piece of heavy armor, we're going to get both physical and spell resist. So that's why right here, when you look at our resistances, they're very close in what they do. And then when we're buffed up... Oops. Our resistance is 18,318 and 18,054 on the back bar, but on the front bar we actually dropped to 1717. But we are at ranged, so we are not up close to the enemy, and we also get a lot more damage reduction than what you've seen. So moving on from here into the, the middle red tree, we do have 40 in the thick skin. This is going to reduce damage you take from damage over time effects, so this is like poison, burning, chilled those kind of effects and it's going to keep you alive a lot better now the next two we have here are hardy and elemental defender hardy reduces physical poison disease damage and we have 66 in here reducing it by 13 percent we have 66 in the elemental defender which reduces flame frost shock and magic damage by 13 percent and that eight percent from ice fortress eight percent damage reduction it stacks with these two so we are actually over a 21 percent resistance on those when you add in thick skin that's 16 on here we actually go up to a 38 percent and then over here we get 22 we actually go to a 43 percent damage reduction so we actually get a lot of damage reduction with this particular setup so we don't need shields because we're not in the fight all the time we're letting our bear do most of the tanking for us and i know it seems complicated but if you let your bear get aggro and you just keep it alive most of the enemies will focus on him like well not all of them but the boss or whatever you're focusing on will focus on them mostly if you can keep their damage high enough moving on over here we have 19 in a quick recovery this increases healing received by five percent Moving on over here to the green tree now, we have 56 in the Warlord, reducing your break free cost by 20%. We are a stamina build, so anything we can do to reduce our stamina stuff is going to be really good. So this is going to reduce the cost of our break free. Sprinter is going to reduce the cost of our sprint by more. We are wearing medium armor, so we do get a reduced sprint cost uh, from the light armor and some from the medium armor. So we do get really good resource management with this. We have four in the bashing focus. Now, if we had one more, we'd actually be at 3%, but this is fine. Uh, we don't bash often, but anything we can do to save resources, if we do bash something, we do save that for us. Now, moving on over here, we have 40 or 75, sorry, in the moon calf. This increases stamina recovery by 14%. Being a Khajiit, we get another 10% from our racial passives. That 10% is now 24, and we are wearing five pieces of medium armor. We're getting another 20% on top of that. So we actually get a 44% stamina recovery. And then we have uh, some things that give us more stamina recovery because of our racial or our class passives. So we end up with a lot more. I think we get 15% stamina recovery from that. So we get a lot more stamina recovery, which is, plays really well into this. 
Next, we get 43 into Tenacity. This increases our Magicka and Stamina return from our Fully Charged Heavy Attacks by 10%. So this plays, again, really well into this. Moving on over here, we have 56 in the Tumbling, reducing our Dodge Roll cost by 20%. We are in Medium Armor. We get another 20% on top of that. So we get a 40% reduced cost to Dodge Roll. We have 13 in the Shadow Ward, because if we do need to block, save some Stamina. Moving on to the blue tree, we have 43 in the Bless. This increases our healing done by 10%. This is what boosts our Vigor heal and allows us to heal us and our pet a little bit better. Moving on to the middle tree, we have 16 in the Physical Weapon Expert. This increases our Light and Heavy attack damage with our Bow by 10%. We also have 40 in the Master at Arms. This increases our Direct Damage done by 16%. This applies to our Bow and some of our class abilities. And then moving on over here, we have 56 in the Mighty. This increases physical poison disease damage by 12%. We have 56 in the Thaumaturge, increasing our damage done with the damage over time effects by 20%. And we have 56 into Precise Strikes, increasing our critical damage and critical healing with stamina abilities by 20%. And then 3 into Piercing, increasing physical pin again by 312. So we have a lot of physical pin with this one. So we can actually break through their armor really quick and bring the enemies down faster so i'm going to show you a little bit about this uh, of this build in play against one of the new world bosses in murkmire now this world boss has when he when he actually spawns has over two three million health i think it is so he's kind of a tough boss to face by yourself but when you have a solo build that's put together really well, the bosses become a lot easier because you can usually take a lot more hits. You have greater survivability and other things. So I'm going to go ahead and buff myself and my bear. I'm going to get myself buffed up here, get my potion going. I'm going to go ahead and hit bigger. And then I'm going to hit this. And we're going to try and avoid as many of these enemies as we can using are mostly our ranged damage. Now I need to get close to my bear again so I can keep him buffed. And that's the other reason why I like Vulcan Scoria, is it does damage over time. So... And you see how I'm keeping the boss targeted in here? This is going to allow you to keep the boss basically focused. So you're not focusing so much on it. But if I do this, I can actually get my bear, keep my bear out too. So, Because the bear will die against the boss because he has a lot of AoE damage.
I'm gonna die. But like I said, it's a little bit more of an advanced build because you have to be comfortable playing with this in this kind of environment. And apparently I'm not as skilled as I'd like to be with this particular build. But it does work, and it's, it's actually a really effective build. It's just you have to know how to play it. If you don't know how to play it, it's not going to be as effective as you would like, and it can be very challenging. So that's why I say it's a more advanced, challenging build. You also have to keep make sure you keep all your buffs applied uh, constantly, because if you don't and they fall off, you lose way too much. And I wasn't using my potions properly, because I didn't have them set up. Um, if I had my potions used properly, I probably would have been getting more damage out of that. And I would have had a little bit more capability of taking that in, that content on just by a little bit more. Because I think I had, there we go, I had 3,989 weapon damage most of the time with a 47% crit. So I wasn't doing everything that I should have. Now if I would have actually been playing like I'm supposed to, I would have had greater minor force. <clears throat> Oops, wrong one. Is that the right one? That's the right one. Nope, that's the other one. There we go. This is what I would normally look like if I was actually facing it. Um, I would have 4,077 weapon damage with 57% crit, 10k penetration. And as you can see, I actually have a decent amount of damage here. And this is without the bear. So with the bear, it's still the same, but I get a little bit more damage per second out of it. Not much. Um, it just depends on the situation, how many enemies you're fighting. Like in this, I'm fighting a lot more enemies, so my damage per second is going to be higher because it counts for all enemies being hit unless you count by this. And in this case, I was only doing about 34k damage to the boss. But it's because he has so many adds. But I use this boss encounter just to show you a general idea or a reference to how the build can work. But that is the Hunter guys, that is a solo build made for Bobo players that are looking for something solo wise. Somebody else asked me to make this a while back and I decided I would give it a try. And I find this to be the best setup for it. But it is not the only setup. Remember, gear is just a tool used to represent what your character can do extra. So this isn't just the ideal setup. This is just one of many setups you can use. And that's why I made suggestions in some of the gear. So if you want to change out like Spriggans for something or even the Griffins for something else or some of these sets for something else, you, you can do that. You could even use Reliquin with it if you wanted to. Um, but Vulcan, Scoria, and Veladrith are the better sets for it. You can use other monster sets, but they're not quite as effective. So... And, and it also comes down to race, too, because they might be more effective on another race versus a Khajiit. So, but that's pretty much it for the build, guys. So I hope you like it. If you do, hit that like button. If you guys want to see more builds by me, you can subscribe. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy might see you in-game. Bye.